Hey, you awesome people. I wanted to share something with you that um, I read last night. And it is uh, absolutely amazing. And I had um, probably what is safe to say just a very great breakthrough in my life. And God never blesses us to keep it all to ourselves. Um, it's so that we can bless others. And so I'm hoping that um, maybe this could help somebody. So I was minding my own business doing my regular Bible reading last night. And it's actually kind of funny because, to be honest with you, I was quite exhausted and um, half asleep. <laughs> but just, you know, trying to pay attention and trying to focus in the midst of it. I had this just gigantic breakthrough and I was just sat in shock and crying, in shock and crying, just as revelation came and, and God was just doing a work in me. So um, I've been learning recently uh, more in depth about strongholds. Now they're talked about in the spiritual sense in churches and stuff, but it's never really explained what a stronghold is. So a stronghold is like a deep, deep rooted belief that you have that's actually becomes part of who you are as a person. And it's based on a lie. For example, um, some people believe that um, nothing good could ever happen to them. And so that's why in their life, no matter what they do or how much they try to get ahead, it never works out because that's something that's deep rooted in them. And even when they want to do better, they still have that. Or, um, you know, some people are convinced that they're alone or convinced that um, they're not destined to be happy and different things like that. Convinced that all men cheat or, you know, just a variety of different things that people can have. But it's deep, deep rooted and so, um, you know, it is the work of God to tear down strongholds. And that's what he does in our life. And that's definitely what he began last night in me. So for me, I'll share with you that this specific stronghold that God is in the process of tearing down for good, hallelujah, is I have had the belief as part of who I am that my voice doesn't matter. It doesn't make a difference. And that started um, very, very early on as a child. So um, I grew up in domestic violence. So countless, countless times I ran to get the cops because um, my dad was beating my mom, going to school officials, different things, and nothing ever came of it nothing ever. I was never helped. We were never helped. Um, when I was raped as a child and speaking out from that, nothing ever changed. Um, even growing into my um, teenage years, adult life, um, different relationships or even friendships that I would speak up and, and pour my heart out to somebody. You're hurting me. Please stop doing this. And it was never... Uh, it never mattered. And so obviously being surrounded by that your whole life, um, you're going to believe that speaking up doesn't, your voice, you don't matter. Your voice doesn't matter. And so I went through a period of a very, very long, 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 long time where I just didn't speak up anymore because it didn't matter and didn't change anything. And there came a point in time when God started changing that in me and causing me to speak up anyway. And it wasn't even at that point, not even to get a resolution, but just because it was the right thing to do. You're supposed to speak up for yourself in certain situations and things and and say how you feel. And so I did start doing that, but i um, still been in situations like that where I would speak up and it just doesn't matter. And so I had that firmly planted. And, and so that's what happens. Maybe that example will help you understand more. You have a belief and then all these things happen in your life that kind of confirm, yes, this is truth when it's really not, but um, you receive it as truth. So that's why I was believing that my voice doesn't matter. It doesn't count. 
And so I was minding my own business last night, reading the Bible. And I, I don't know how, how have I gone my whole entire life? All the times that I have read through the Bible, how did I miss this? And that I understand that the Bible is living and, and that's like what always happens that you can read the same thing and, and see it a different way. And, but it's still like for this to be such a major part of my life in stronghold, like why, how did I never see this before, but I see it now. So that's the whole point. So anyway, first Corinthians 14, 10, the apostle Paul writes, there are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world and none of them is without significance. None of them. Like all the time, all the time in my life, you know, there are so many people who didn't listen, but God listened. And so it was a really awesome experience and I wanted to share that um, because aside from that great revelation that it is in itself, it also led me to believe that you know, to the idea that first of all, now, then since my voice matters to God, I want to be cautious of what I use my voice for, what my voice says, since my voice matters to God and you're, this is you too. You're in the world. So this is you too. I want to be cautious about what I say since God is paying attention to what I'm saying and it matters to him what I say. But then secondly, I realize then, then everyone else's voices matter. So I want to take more care in listening, List, just listening to other people's voices and what they have to say. And, um, and so I just wanted to share this with you. And, uh, even if maybe in itself didn't help you, maybe it can, you know, trigger something else that, that would help you and uh, something else that you could relate to. God always does that stuff. Um, maybe the exact thing, or even if you can hear a sermon sometimes and maybe the, the exact message wasn't for you, but like some offshoot comment, that said that really opens up your eyes and, you know, to something else. And so I'm hoping that that happens for you. But you guys have a great day and I love you. Bye.